on the past this week this week, we're seeing the glass half full, looking on the bright side, and walking on the sunny side of the street, because the news has been getting me down lately. We still have seven days of bite-sized history, though, starting in the funny pages on August 5th, 1924, when Leapin' Lizards, the Little Orphan Annie comic strip, debuted in the New York Daily News. The comic, created by Harold Gray, featured an 11-year-old orphan girl with a mop of red hair, a red dress, and strangely empty eyes. At that time, very few comics featured girls, and Annie drew in new female readers. In the strip, Little Orphan Annie goes on a series of adventures with her dog Sandy, her benefactor, Oliver Daddy Warbucks, and a colorful cast of sidekicks and villains. Annie exposes corruption, faces down bullies, and helps ordinary people in their daily struggles, and gee whiskers is she optimistic. The comic was a popular daily strip with kids, but it also gained a following of adults because of its commentary on the political issues of the day, including organized labor and the New Deal. Harold Gray's characters made the leap from the funny pages to a radio show, products, two studio movies, and eventually a Broadway musical in 1977, which reminds us, with the catchiest earworm known to man, that the sun will come out tomorrow. Moving on two years later to August 6, 1926, when 20-year-old New Yorker Gertrude Ederly became the first woman to swim the English Channel. Four men had already done it, but Gertrude was faster than all of them, setting a record of 14 hours 31 minutes, a record that stood for 24 years. The English Channel is 22.5 miles wide. The water is cold, the currents are powerful, and the waves are harsh. Gertrude, who had medaled in the Paris Olympics in 1924, tried and failed to swim the channel in 1925, then spent a year training to try it again. The newspapers scoffed, writing that women were the weaker sex. But on August 6, Gertrude suited up, coated her skin with lanolin and lard to protect her from jellyfish stings in the cold water. She entered the choppy waters off the coast of France and swam. A tugboat followed with her trainer on board. Finally, she swam ashore in England with a record time, which New York celebrated by throwing her an enormous parade. She was inducted into the International Swimming Hall of Fame and spent her retirement years teaching swimming at a school for the deaf. Book banning makes me grumpy, so I'm happy to share that on August 7, 1934, the ban of James Joyce's Ulysses was lifted 14 years after it was published. Ulysses is a difficult book, however, it wasn't banned for being incomprehensible, but for obscenity. Even before it was available in book form, serializations of it were burned in the US, Ireland, Canada, and England. Then, in 1920, afraid that the burnings might have piqued people's interest enough to read it, the New York Society for the Suppression of Vice succeeded in having it labeled as obscene, which made it illegal to import the book to the United States. Then, in 1933, the ACLU and Random House publishers coordinated to get a test case, United States versus one book called Ulysses, before the court. The government's claim against the book was obscenity, so U.S. District Judge John Woolsey read the book in its entirety to find out. He concluded that it wasn't, that the words criticized as dirty were commonly known and used, and that while the effect of Ulysses on the reader undoubtedly is somewhat emetic, nowhere does it tend to be an aphrodisiac, by which he meant it might be nauseating, but it won't get you hot and bothered. Two, three, four, tell the people what she wore. On August 8, 1960, she may have been afraid to come out of the locker, but everyone in America was singing about her because on that day, Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini hit number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The hit song was written by Paul Vance and Lee Pockris and sung by 16-year-old teen idol Brian Hyland. A novelty song, it tells the story of a girl who is too, too embarrassed to wear her bikini in public, appropriate for the time, because though bikinis had been around for a few years, they were still considered risque. The popularity of Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow Polka Dot Bikini led to a marked increase in bikini sales, though, and a slew of 1960s surfer movies. 
To keep those polka dots bright, you need to keep them clean. So thank goodness on August 9, 1910, Alva Fisher got a patent for an electric washing machine. Fisher's washing machine was produced by the Hurley Machine Company of Chicago. The Thor, as they called it, had a drum that was powered by a small electric motor and a self-reversing gearbox so the clothes wouldn't get all bunched up. The engine wasn't watertight on the earliest models, leading to short circuits, just a hint of danger. But I must admit, I might have risked a little shock if faced with the labor-intensive alternative. So thank you, Alva Fisher, and later inventors who made laundry a little less electrifying. On August 10th, 1846, Congress established the Smithsonian. I'm always hoping an unknown uncle will leave me money, and though it's never happened to me, it did happen to the United States. James Smithson, a wealthy Englishman who had never been to the U.S. and had no known ties to the country, left more than $503,000 to the people of the United States to found at Washington under the name of the Smithsonian Institution an establishment for the increase and diffusion of knowledge. Though his motivations remain a mystery, it is known that Smithson, who was educated at Oxford, conducted scientific research, and as, as a result of his gift, the world's largest museum and research complex was created. And finally, on August 11, 1866, the world's first roller skating rink opened in Newport, Rhode Island, leading to generations of awkward adolescents doing the hokey pokey on wheels. But I digress. The popularity of roller skating has seen its peaks and valleys over the years, but 1866 was a peak. When the Atlantic House Hotel in Newport needed to drum up some extra business, it contracted with James Plimpton to provide rooms for the New York Skating Association to introduce skating to the community. Plimpton was famous in the skating world for inventing the modern quad roller skate. He converted the dining room of the hotel into a skating area and the roller rink was born. Rinking, as it was known in the early days, became an enormously popular form of fun and recreation. That's all for this week. Consider giving us a thumbs up and join us next time for more bite-sized history.